Hey everyone, Encina Sabera here. So I ended up getting a lot of questions from the Med Circle interview that I ended up doing on dissociative identity disorder. I wanted to, I, I basically went through and I collected as many questions as I could and I had you guys ask me other questions on my Instagram and I've kind of compiled a bunch of them and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Hopefully this helps. I went through, wrote them down, let's go through them. All right, the first question is, I know Encina said that her alters don't age, but I wonder, can many learn new things? If Encina teaches her how to read or something kind of advanced, will she learn and retain it? Does she develop mentally? So technically, yes and no. Um, many is always gonna be at the age of three and she's always going to be at the develop developmental like state of a three-year-old um she does learn new things depending on how much she uses it is it will depend on how well she retains it we have taught her new things um and i say we because my friends and i who have been around many uh have definitely like gone through and taught her to read and taught her you know numbers and things like that and you know she retains it as long as she uses it overall Minnie will always be a three-year-old now that isn't to say that everybody who has alters don't age because there are some alters that do age up and there's also alters that will age down as confusing as that sounds um you know as as time goes on depending on the person and depending on their alters they can age or they might not age like many and my alters my alters don't age this doesn't have to do with DID, but I noticed that you spoke in sign language at times during your interview. Do you know sign language? So when I was in college, um, I actually took four years of sign language or ASL. And for those of you who don't know what ASL is, it's American Sign Language. I do tend to use my hands a lot when I speak in general. But when I am saying like normal words, I guess that are like more simple uh, with sign language, then sometimes I'll sign them. Uh, I don't always notice that I'm signing, but I mean, hey, like I'm a hand talker, so yeah. <laughs> what happened to your abusers? So this is a really good question. My abusers were, for those of you who don't know, uh, my abusers were my dad, as well as his friends. I'm not really sure what happened to his friends, like there was no, there wasn't anybody that got charged or anything, but when I was younger, my dad was actually, and I apologize if this triggers anybody, I am going to let you guys know how some things have happened and stuff, so if any of this video is triggering, I apologize in advance. Basically, my dad, when I was younger, was murdered, and he got into a bar fight, and the guy and him took it outside, and he was shot in the head. So, you know, a lot of people um, say that, oh, it's a good thing, you know, that he's gone. And honestly, for me, it is. I hate the way that he went. Like, that really sucks. Uh, it would suck for anybody. But, I mean, there was a lot of abuse from him um, towards my mom and I during that time and it's it's a good thing that, you know, I'm free and clear and I've been able to grow and I'm still going through the therapy for all of the trauma that happened. What does it feel like coming back after an alter takes the lead? Is it exhausting? That's a very good question. Um, so it really varies from person to person. So first of all, it depends on if I'm fighting the switch or if I'm going with the flow. There are times when I'm going to switch and I can feel the switch happening and I will fight it as much as I can. When I'm fighting it, I start to get really tired. I start to kind of like get sometimes dizzy. I'll feel like I'm getting, like I'm very fogged out, almost like someone who takes NyQuil and you're starting to feel very like however the quill makes you feel <laughs> like um i'm very sensitive to medications and stuff so nyquil definitely like gets me really easily oh hold on squish wants in okay okay
and then back with the squanch. Where was I? Oh, okay. So if I'm not tired, the switch can be very fluid. You might not even notice the switch happening, and most of the time, actually, you won't notice the switch happening. Minnie tends to come out, and she just kind of does this thing where she like peeks through the eyes, and she doesn't like fully front, but she will look around and see if it's safe to come out and see if she's around good people. Oh, another thing, so, when I've come back, and it also depends on if I've been co-conscious or if I've been dissociated. If I'm co-conscious, then, I mean, obviously, it feels a little easier once I come back because I've, I've seen what's been going on and I know what's been going on, I hear what's been going on. But if I've been dissociated, then I can be confused, obviously, because, you know, I'm, I'm usually not in the same place that I left. So if I was sitting here and a switch happened and, you know, I ended up being in another room, obviously I'm gonna be like, okay, what happened? Like, where did I go? What did I do? It can be confusing, it can be exhausting, it can be like dizzying, or it can just feel very fluid and normal like nothing has happened. What was your first reaction to Minnie coming out on the Med Circle interview? When I watched it, honestly, I... <laughs> I get, I'm a very emotional and sensitive person, so I cry really easy, but when she came out and I saw her come out, I was just so proud that, you know, she's so brave and she really wants to, you know, make friends and be around people. So watching the video, I actually cried a little bit and I was just like, it got me right here in the feels. I am looking forward to doing more videos with Minnie and I'm looking forward to, you know, she's looking forward to it as well. I'm pretty sure that some of the other alters will come out at some point to do videos because they've kind of been talking about it and deciding on whether or not they want to do it. You know, all we can do is respect their wishes and respect what they want to do. Can you hold a job with DID? Yes. I have had many, many jobs. The majority of the jobs that I've actually had have been because of like art that I've really been interested in or something that I've wanted to learn. So like I was a, I was a sushi chef for a little while and I don't eat any kind of seafood or any kind of food that comes from the water. I just liked the art of it. I really liked how it looked. I really liked being able to make it and seeing how it's done. There's so many people that love it. And you know, I have lots of friends and you know, the people that I dated and stuff, they're always like, oh, let's go get sushi. And I was always like, I don't like it. But so it's, it was always fun to know that like, oh, hey, I know how to make that and I can actually like do it. Maybe we could just spend a night at home and I'll make you sushi type of thing. <laughs> Sorry, I went on a tangent. Anyways, so with the job thing, yes, I can hold a job. My DID in the beginning was very confusing and it was a lot more like, I would go like days of being dissociated and it was really rough. It was frustrating, confusing, just really hard to deal with in general. So when it comes to holding a job, for me now, yes, I can absolutely hold the job, you know, with DID because we all kind of work as a team. My alter have been like kind of fronting a little bit more and stuff because I've been very stressed out and I just recently went through a very traumatic breakup that I'm not going to talk about just yet. I'm still going through some work with it and everything but eventually I'll, I'll get the story out there for you guys. I have a family member that has DID. What is the best support that I can give them? In my opinion the best support that you can give anybody with mental illnesses or mental health disorders. The best thing that you can do is just be there for them. Be empathetic. Don't be sympathetic. And by that, I mean empathize with them. If they say, you know, I'm really depressed, if you've never felt depression, don't tell them, we'll just be happy. Because if your brain isn't creating the chemicals to make you happy, then you're not going to be happy. It doesn't work that way. You can try to build your serotonin to make yourself a little bit happier and such. However, it's not like a one said and done, like in the moment, okay, I'm gonna come out of my depression because I'm just gonna think positively. It doesn't work like that. I would recommend joining groups. Facebook groups have a ton of them. There are like on meetup.com, there's a whole bunch of groups that you can join for people with DID or people with mental illnesses in general. Realizing and, and noticing like, hey, do you want advice? Or do you want to just talk? Because not everybody needs somebody to fix it. So if you're a fixer, you know, ask before 
you know, say, hey, are you looking for some kind of advice or are you just wanting me to listen because I'm here for you no matter what. Just, you know, recognizing and checking up on the person is a really good thing. Being able to just be there in general for them is just really, is really going to help a lot. Learning about it, reading articles, reading things online, you know, watching these kinds of YouTube videos and being able to just reach out as much as you can to learn and to grow with them. I hope that made sense. Since your breakup, are your alters coming out more? Yes, they are. Um, not all of them from what I've noticed, but they are, many especially. It's still a controlled environment when it comes to that, if you can even imagine DID being controlled. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. Are you on disability for DID? No, I'm not. There are some people that have DID to where it is very overwhelming at times, and DID in general can be overwhelming. It can leave people needing to be on disability. However, with me, I'm not. Are you on medication for DID? So I get this question a lot, actually, and the answer is no, I'm not, because there is no medication for DID. There are medications to treat symptoms of DID, like if you have an alter who has depression, you can treat that symptom. There are no medications for dissociative identity disorder, just the symptoms that come along with it. Has an alter ever dated someone else? One of my alters named Devin actually was in a relationship with a guy and I had to share my time with her and him. <laughs> it was frustrating and kind of confusing at the same time. Enjoyed the guy's company. It was like he was really sweet and such, um, but they ended up dating and getting somewhat serious, I guess. And Back to <sighs> okay. Sorry, um, I felt a switch starting to happen, and I was in the middle of something, so I was slightly fighting it, and the switch ended up not happening. So yeah, uh, that can happen too, where I just kind of like. I guess that's another thing that happens once I am going to switch or if it's kind of like a very fast feeling of switching, um, just like my thoughts stop and I kind of like, my mind goes blank and um, it just becomes very difficult to concentrate all of a sudden. So. 
So what I was saying, yes, one of my alters has dated somebody else and it was a very um, confusing and frustrating time. So I tried to narrow down all the questions. Those are all the ones that I decided to choose for now. I'm sure I'll do plenty more videos uh, explaining my DID and explaining what happened or what's going on with it. If you have any questions or video suggestions, let me know down below and I'll get to as many as I can, promise. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I hope you guys are all having a magical day. I'll talk to you guys another time. Bye.